any American that cares about truth, de decency, and rationality should be absolutely ashamed by what we saw by Joe Biden during his Union Station speech. My friends, for those of you who are not aware, Joe Biden recently made a speech, quite recently as of the recording of this video, like almost like a few minutes ago as of the recording of this video, at Union Station, um, talking about the threat to American democracy. Now, Joe Biden pulled this rhetorical game some time ago during the Philadelphia speech in which he villainized half the country and he used false premises to forward propaganda points meant to score him political victories, which in all reality simply made his numbers go even further down than they already are and made him seem more insidious than he already is. This speech, my friends, up the ante in a different way. This speech up the ante because Biden had the gall to completely and utterly disregard hundreds of years of American constitutional history, disregard scores upon scores of detail about the founding philosophy of America, disregard basic distinctions, disregard basic facts um, regarding to the relationship of certain events, all to spin his own tail on how if you don't vote for him or his party, America, not only is America doomed, but democracy and the American way of a life, which according to Biden, expresses itself by and through democracy, is also doomed. To make such a ridiculous statement, you have to be doing all kind of mental and rhetorical acrobatics and you also must not have a conscience which would correct you in the course of your wrongdoing. Biden committed quite a bit of wrongdoing during this speech. The only thing I could even think of during this speech is how a president of the United States, a sitting president who is meant to preside over the machinery which safeguards this country all the way down to its foundations, had such little regard for those foundations. And let me get you guys to understand something. If America loses its foundations, then all this talk about elections and politics becomes moot. If America loses its foundations, America no longer exists. And many would argue, and I push back all the time, that America has already lost its foundations. We already have a police state. We already have an overbearing executive branch. We already have a legislative branch that doesn't actually do its job and that siphons off powers to the administrative state. We already have all of these things that take America away from its initial vision. But so long as we have the appearance of a, 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 a foundationally stable republic, we ought to still fight for it. But speeches like this will make that much harder. My friends, during this speech, Joe Biden did several questionable things. I'm going to tackle this from different levels of analysis. I will begin with some of the more obvious stuff, and I will move some of the more philosophical and foundational stuff. This is how I do things. This is how my analysis uh, uh, proceeds. Because if we're going to actually understand the harm this man is doing to our country, we have to understand it on all kinds of levels. He began the speech by trying to equate the Paul Pelosi attacker with what happened on January 6th. And in a reference to January 6th, Biden repeated the distorted narrative that January 6th was an attack on democracy and an attempt to, to storm the American Capitol. Need I remind all of you of the facts? There were hundreds of people at the Capitol on the steps on January 6th. A handful of those people broke off and went into the Capitol. Most of those people weren't violent whatsoever. They were simply yelling and they were doing silly memes and jokes and they were just being crazy. They were trespassing, but they weren't violent. The few that were violent have been charged and they have been arrested. And those, many of those who were not violent, who were simply in the vicinity of the Capitol during January 6th, Many of them have been held in gulag-like conditions without due process, without the assurance of due process, and according to several reports, those same people have been treated in very 
bad ways. I will have links in the description down below if you want to see what is happening to many people who attended January 6th and did nothing more but use their God-given right of expression to express themselves. And yet, this president has the audacity to lie and use the corporate media's narrative, which aids and abets him in his lying, because a lot of people who are not informed actually think J6 was an insurrection. I swear, that makes me mad. An insurrection. What insurrection? If that's an insurrection, it was one of the most poorly planned and poorly executed insurrections in the history of insurrections. It was a bunch of patriots who had a problem with what they perceived to be a problem. And regardless of if you agree with those patriots or not, they have the right to defend themselves. They have the right to express themselves in a country built upon the freedom of expression. Now, Biden talked a lot about freedom in this speech. We'll get to that in a second. So he lied about J6, tried tying that in with Paul Pelosi's attacker, whose motivations are still kind of murky. And we know from the affidavit that the attacker supposedly wanted to break Nancy's kneecaps for some reason that's incoherent. So, wait, hold, hold. so, so he's tying J6. Many of whom went, people who went there actually had rational reasons for going there, even if you don't really agree with it, to an attacker who's mentally ill who lived at a nudist enclave, who had no stable ideological core, for what purpose? So not only is he lying about a historical event that has been destroyed already by the media, but Biden is also attempting to, to take an event which could have been the end of Paul Pelosi's life and use that for his own political benefit. And what do you call someone who uses a life-threatening event which has no relationship to broader politics as a, uh, as a, as, as a tool in their toolbox? You call them an opportunist. He was being a conscious less opportunist in this speech. But then as these, the speech progresses, Biden begins making statements like, the Capitol is the crucible of American democracy. And he begins, he begins tying the idea of America and the American way of life to this notion of democracy. I'm going to play a few clips of that right here so you can see what I'm talking about. Then I'll come back and give you a full analysis. Let's go. There's something else at stake. Democracy itself. I'm not the only one who sees it. Recent polls have shown that overwhelming majority of Americans believe our democracy at ri is at risk, that our democracy is under threat. They, too, see that democracy is on the ballot this year, and they're deeply concerned about it, all of us. It's about what makes America, America. It's about the durability of our democracy. For democracies are more than a form of government. They're a way of being, a way of seeing the world, a way that defines who we are, what we believe, why we do what we do. Democracy is simply that fundamental. We must, in this moment, dig deep within ourselves and recognize that we can't take democracy for granted any longer. So as you can see, he is tying this broader idea of America to this idea of democracy. And he's basically saying all the way down to who we are as people, America is a democracy. One thing must stand clear. America never was and America never will be a democracy. Madison was quite clear in the Federalist Papers that pure democracy was a system that would lead to the destruction of civil society. And in fact, America was a republic which filters the desires of the citizen through mechanisms which protect the individual, which protect the minority. And this system is the best system for the principle of justice to flourish in society. Because a society without justice is a society that does not exist whatsoever. And democracy, putting moral value into the hands of the, of the majority, as opposed to in the hands of the individual, is inherently anti-justice. It is inherently a recipe for tyranny of the highest degree, tyranny of the crowd. And Biden's inability to recognize this single distinction demonstrates his unwillingness to give deference to the republic in which he exists and which he is supposed to maintain as president. But it also says that he doesn't really care about the truth. He cares about his narrative. And someone who would rather stand on the spacious and weak ground of illusion as opposed to the concrete ground of reality is someone you ought to run away from as much as possible. And he is tying the significance of America to elections. My friends, 
America was quite literally, first of all, we have to understand this. America is first and foremost a principle. America is not an election. America is not a ballot box. America is not a political system. America is at first and foremost a principle. A principle where Jack recognizes the moral primacy. That means the importance of the individual to morality, to moral actions. And then, by recognizing the importance of the individual as a morally important person, puts restraints on both government and society on what they can do and what they cannot do without violating what we call an individual's rights that is an individual's ability to act in a moral way. Because when they violate what you, what your rights, they violate your ability to act in a moral way and they undermine the basis of society. That's the principle of America. And that principle is then enforced by political structure. And the structure of America is the structure of a republic, which is a multifaceted government in which the uh, consent of the governed is its basis and the wills of the people, which Biden mentioned, are constrained by mechanisms that protect the minority, that protect the individual, all the way into its structural and political DNA and its philosophical foundations. America is an affirmation of the value of the individual. And yet in this speech, Joe Biden made America seem as if it represented this vague, abstract idea of democracy, as if it was more 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 interested and more validated by the idea of voting than it was the idea of freedom. And then, of course, Biden understands the inconsistency of treating America merely as a political entity which lives or dies on the basis of voting, which, by the way, it does not. America is bigger than your ability to vote. It's much bigger. But then he goes ahead and says, our freedom is under assault. Our rights are so important. Our rights are so sacrosanct. And this is how you know a liar when they use certain principles that they themselves do not uphold. Biden, being the custodian of the American government, has the moral obligation to protect the rights of Americans reflected in the Constitution. But instead, throughout his tenure, Biden has assaulted and attacked the individual at the most basic level when he attempted to force millions of Americans in their private capacities to get a medicine they did not want to get to get vaccinated at the, at, at the point of a gun. He tried doing that. And yet... He talks about how he likes freedom and how he respects rights and how this midterm election is about respecting rights. This is a president who has shut down my ability or anyone else's ability to trade with people overseas in Russia, thereby, thereby destroying our ability to engage in free trade. And yet he talks about how much he loves freedom and how this election is so important to, to freedom on his end. This is a president, my friends, who colluded with Facebook, his DHS colluded with Facebook and his White House colluded with Facebook to flag certain uh, uh, post they didn't like about COVID-19 and get them taken down. And yet this president claims to care about rights and freedoms. This is a president, my friends, who worked with the traders in Congress, the few traders who decided that red flag laws and emboldening the anti-gun legal infrastructure in this country would be a wise way to prevent crimes. This is a president who has constantly assaulted the Second Amendment and his rhetoric and through policy has, has done the same thing. And yet this president claims to value freedom. This is a president, my friends, who has been ex exceptionally clear that he does not understand the nation he's supposed to represent. And yet, I'm supposed to believe this president values my freedom, values your freedom, values the freedom of America, and even understands what freedom means. This is a president who's not even working with the same values that America was built upon. This is the president Man, you know guys, I do these videos because I'm trying to get you to realize something. A lot of the politicians in Washington couldn't care less about your freedoms or you. And sometimes that's hard to figure out. It's hard to decide if that's true. But other times, if you have a knowledge of what freedom is 
and by virtue of being a human being, man is the, the he, he, is, he is on the front row seat to freedom because freedom rests in him. So by virtue of being a human being, you understand what freedom is, then you should inherently understand what's going on here. Someone who wants to suppress your speech does not believe in your freedom. Someone who wants to force you to take a medicine does not believe in your freedom. Someone who wants to stop you from trading with people peacefully does not believe in your freedom. Someone who wants to suppress your ability to defend yourself does not believe in your freedom. And yet, Biden thinks he can just gloss over all of that stuff. And tie it all to voting. And having free and fair elections. This is one of the last points I'm going to make, my friends. So far, we've established that Biden doesn't understand the moral foundations of America. He doesn't, he doesn't quite understand. He, 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 he doesn't quite, he, he lied about January 6th. He tried to conflate Paul Pelosi and J6 together when, there, when there's no conflation to be had. But most importantly than anything else, this president is treating voting itself. As if it's a right. Because you notice in the speech, the only time he invoked the word rights was in the context of voting. I will say this, and I will say this once more. Voting is a privilege. Voting is an important privilege. It's a privilege that allows us to perpetuate our constitutional structure. But it is a privilege nonetheless. Voting is not a right. Because the moment you say voting is a right, is the moment you presume by saying that, that rights are granted to you by a machine, by a structure. Government gives you the privilege to vote, but government does not give you your rights. Government secures your rights. Your rights are written on the heart by nature or God, whoever you choose to attribute it to. And then they are enshrined and protect, and into law and then protected by the legal structures of that law. And yet Joe Biden throughout this entire speech treated voting as a right and by implication treated all of your rights as easily taken away by government. <laughs> and he wants you to believe that he actually gives a squat about freedom. This is a president who sees that his approval ratings are around 42 or so percent. He understands that his political power is going to be significantly limited after this midterm election. He understands that his agenda is going to be hit a roadblock when he loses the House and the Senate. But this president, instead of actually trying to meet Americans where they are and actually trying to understand the error of his ways... This is a president who would much rather speak down to an entire section of the country. He would much rather besmirch America's moral and philosophical foundations. He would much rather lie about things that you can research on your own. He would much rather tell you how much, how, how much he cares about freedom while everything he did in office violated your freedom. This is someone who was not only painfully unaware, this is someone who, if he is aware, is quite insidious in what he does. My friends... I don't give you exhortations to vote, but I'll say this much. This midterm election, you should vote for freedom. And I don't know who, what party is going to be that vote for freedom, but I certainly know what party won't be that vote for freedom. And that is the Democratic Party will not be that vote for freedom. If this speech is any indication, you should stick clear from these people. Because it's clear to me that they hold the proper vision of America in contempt. It's clear to me that that's the case. And if that's the case, you ought to run as far away from them as possible. Being an American is not merely being, about being able to vote. Being an American is an axiomatic proposition. It is affirming an eternal truth that governments can't violate without undermining their legitimacy and their own existence. And that truth is liberty. And no one gives you liberty. You already have it. And damn anyone who tells you differently. All right, my friends, I gotta get out of here before I go off the rails. If you want to support my mission, please be sure to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel.
buy my merch. You can see all that stuff at christianjwatson.com. And they'll have all the links in the description down below. I forgot to plug these guys. There's a great group out there called Uncensored America. They do a lot of good stuff around free speech. And if you want to support an organization that is truly concerned with free speech, go to uncensoredamerica.us. They're a great group. They're hosting John Doyle and Hunter Avalone down over at University of Tennessee in Knoxville. Go down and support them. Uh, tickets are free November and November 14th. Um, and I encourage you guys to go down and support them. All right, guys. I got to go. I love you guys so much. Please take care of yourself. Please uh, remain vigilant. And most importantly, please stay pensive. Bye, guys.